Okay, guys. Now let's. Uh, we are talking about the different uh, questions uh, from CSI Net Group B, and we are actually dissecting those questions uh, to understand what are the type of questions that they might give us uh, for this problem. Now, in this case, uh, in this video, actually, we'll be talking about again Group B, and we'll be talking about the molecular biology, molecular biology questions. So let's talk about the molecular biology questions. Now in this part of the molecular biology questions what we know is that uh, again group B questions are always uh, kind of direct questions. You don't need to apply much of your concepts to answer them but molecular biology as you know will requires a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of terminology understanding is important. For example let's say the first question which eukaryotic RNA polymerase transcribes tRNA genes. That's a completely direct question so direct memorizing type of questions nothing uh, there to apply your knowledge. So in this case either you know the answers or just keep away the question. Now I know that RNA polymerase uh, tRNA uh, genes are transcribed by the RNA polymerase 3. So I know that RNA polymerase 3 is going to be the correct option. So option 3 is the correct option for them. RNA polymerase 3 not the other one. Right. So direct questions are always dangerous because if you know the answers you know if you don't know the answers you need to skip away. Now let's move on to the second one. Interaction of antibody with antigen is like lock and key. The major force responsible for antigen antibody interaction is now that's the question. What is the major uh, response major force that is responsible for the antigen antibody interaction? Now you may think about a little bit of knowledge uh, to be applied in these questions, but if you know directly that's the best option, best choice. But I know that normally antigen and antibody interaction that we all know is mostly it's mostly via hydrogen bonding this is via hydrogen bonding you need to know this because these are the basics of immunology right so if you know these things you can easily write tick on this option one so you know option one is the correct op option this is again a kind of direct memorizing little bit of knowledge should be applied but it is also direct memorizing type of question and you're going to see most of this direct memorizing type of questions in this group b now the third one is the major histocompatibility complex 1 or MHC1 is present at, now that's the question. This is again, again a basic question, again a direct question. So again a direct question, direct memorizing type, but it's kind of very, very basic. You should know, if you know immunology, if you know the basics of immunology, you should be able to answer this question. And I know that yes, major histocompatibility complex 1 or MHC1 is found in all the nucleated cell inside the body without even uh, looking at the options. But I need to see that yes, option 1 is telling the all nucleated cells. So obviously, option 1 is the correct option, so I can tick on option 1. But this type of question is very basic, very flat. So they might give you some flat questions like this. But you need to be prepared. You need to learn the basics of each, every topic of your biology syllabus, right? Otherwise, suppose you uh, prepare your immuno, uh, suppose you prepare your immunology very well. Now the questions from immunology become tough, so you may might not attend it. But you suppose skip genetics. But genetics questions are really easy. If you just learn the basics, the flat questions you can get it. But I due to not reading genetics very well, you may not be able to answer those questions. So it's always a good idea to learn the basics of all the topics that are there. But then focus on certain points, which are your advantageous points. Then uh, rest of the part will be there. But you can't, uh, can't actually separate all those things out of each other. Now let's move on to this one. The melting temperature or TM is defined as the temperature at which half of the DNA strands are in the double helical state and half are in the random coil state. Yes, because that's the situation. Because you know, if we, this is the DNA double stranded, if we heat it, it will become denatured. So single strand DNA will be there. So single strand DNA never remains and this single stranded place actually it randomly coils into a kind of secondary structure. Right? So so TM is the temperature that is, uh, that is at which uh, half of the DNA remains at double state and half remains at this, uh, at this uh, random coil state right so that's that temperature is called the TM or melting temperature of the DNA now the TM of the DNA does not depends on now that's the thing now you need to know what is TM because in this question they just uh, describe what is TM some questions if they might not describe it they just can tell you TM of the DNA does not depends on and then give this but in this question they provide you a several round of section where they provide the information about what is TM now once you know that what does this TM depend on because as, as this question is explaining to you that what is TM 
you need to apply your concept to answer this. It's a kind of concept memorizing type of question because remember, in this case, as you know, now which thing will definitely influence DNA and which thing does not. Now, normally length of the DNA obviously will be uh, an influence on the TM because length, as the length is larger or longer of the DNA, the TM will be higher. Now, the percent GC content, obviously it is also important because G pairs with three hydrogen bonds. So, if there is more GC, it will require more temperature to separate those strands out. Now, the third thing is the presence of cations. That's also thing because presence of cations stabilizes the DNA structure. So, if cation presence, uh, the TM will uh, obviously uh, going to be higher. Presence of anions, because the presence of anions is not, not required actually. It does not depend on the melting temperature because you know presence of anions is not at all required for the DNA structure to hold. Presence of cations are required because the DNA backbone is negative stranded. The presence of bivalent cations are, are really important in that cases. But anions are not required. So I can take this uh, option 4 out of it. So option 4 is going to be the correct answer here. So option 4 is the correct one. So in this question is conceptual guys because you can slowly walk through these options to get which are correct and which is not. Right? So these are the uh, way to solve those questions guys and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.